As machinists, we all have some common enemies we fight every single day trying to make good components inside our machines. And nothing will ruin your day faster than vibration and chatter. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And on this special episode of Shop Talk, we're gonna be talking about how to handle chatter and vibration in your milling processes in order to get the highest performance out of your tooling and your machine. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today as promised, we are going to be talking about chatter. Now, for those of you who may be a little newer to the trade, when I'm talking about chatter, we're not talking about talking, we're talking about vibration and deflection in a cut. So essentially chatter is when the tool is going through a cut, typically we're talking about an end mill because you know, we're at end mill, face mill, side mill, shoulder mill. This is more the milling aspect of things and chatter is when the tool or workpiece is vibrating and it creates a lot of problems. Um, there are a few things that you can do to help mitigate chatter in your work processes. The first obviously is your work holding. No matter how good your machine is, no matter how good your programming is, if you're not holding the part well, if that part is held loosely, if you do not have a strong connection between your workpiece and your table of your machine, you're gonna experience chatter. That said, once that's taken care of, the flip side of that and something that goes hand in hand with that is your feeds and speeds. So how many RPM that tool is turning at and how many inches per minute or millimeters per minute or meters per minute if you're in metric, that tool is traversing through the cut. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you have something like a very big steel block, you know, let's say you're milling a big steel block that weighs 100 pounds, you might be able to get away with a bit more because that part is so big and heavy that you think the deflection is gonna be less. But realistically, if your speeds and feeds are bad, you're actually gonna experience deflection instead of in the workpiece, in the tool. So really, there's no way around it. You have to address this every time you're programming something. And it's something that we do have to fight every single day. If you're getting chatter, there are some things that that's gonna cause. First off, your tool life is gonna go way down. You have to think about it. If you have a tool that is vibrating, typically with carbide, one of the biggest things that destroys cutting cutters fast is deflection and vibration because that tool is not really meant to flex. So if you have a cut and it's bouncing as it's going through the cut, your edges are gonna get worn down, you might break the tool, you're gonna blow off the corners. Secondly, the finish of that part isn't gonna be any good. And if you're sending parts out the door that don't look good, sorry guys, that's a huge component of machining. You need to make that finish as nice as it can be because even if it's not called out, that reflects on your ability hugely as a shop. Third is keeping things in spec. If you have a long tool and that whole tool is deflecting, you're gonna get tapered. Because up here at the top of the cutter, that cut is probably gonna be on size. Down here, if that cutter is deflecting, that bottom of that part is actually gonna be out of spec. So you could have a part that deflects, you know, multiple thou out of tolerance just from that chatter and deflection. So if you experience these things, you're gonna wanna do your best to mitigate them. And today we're gonna be talking about a very interesting product and concept that we got sent along by MSC and that is called the AccuPro ST Series. The whole concept behind it, this is an AccuPro ST Series kit. The whole concept behind it is very interesting to me and a shop of my size. You know, we're a small job shop. Um, we don't have the highest performing machines in the world. We do a lot of the best we can to get jobs done. And this platform is really designed for shops like ours, among others, but there's a lot of really appealing features about this. The whole concept behind the AccuPro ST series is to get you better performance out of what I would consider run of the mill machines. So we've tested a lot of tooling out here over the years. And you know, when you see the tooling videos that these companies will put out or the demonstrations, if you go see them live, you're blown away because this tooling is performing amazing. But then you look at the machine, they're running the test inside a million dollar machine. 
You bring it back, we don't have million dollar machines. And it's disappointing because you don't get the same performance out of that tooling because the machine it was running in is just better than yours. And this is actually developed for these machines. So what you see is kind of what you get. And that's a huge bonus. So to go through this system here, this is an AccuPro ST system kit. It comes with four components. The first component is the retention knob, um, you know, also called a pull stud. This looks very much like a normal pull stud, but there are a few things about it that you want to keep in mind. One, it does have the spigot for a through spindle coolant, which is handy. The biggest thing about it, this is obviously a Cat 40 style holder, is that MSC has designed this so they know exactly what the length of this is, what the weight of it is, and the balancing of it. And that, I'm gonna explain why that's gonna be important here in a minute. The next component is the tool holder body. So this looks at first glance kind of like a pretty typical tool holder body, but there are some important features about it that really differentiate it. First off, much like the pull stud or the retention knob, MSC knows exactly how long this is. It's precision engineered and precision manufactured. They know exactly what the balance of it is and they know what the length of it is. And again, you'll see why this is important. The next thing is, is this looks similar to a side lock holder. In a way it is, but it's not quite what you think. Typically with a side lock holder, you know, you have a tool either with a ground flat or a welding flat on it, and you just kind of ram a set screw against it. We use solid holders like that all the time, but they're not the most accurate things in the world compared to, you know, other available options out there. This is not a typical side lock holder. What this is, you can see that torque screw right there. Underneath there, if we pull up one of the tools here, there is a welded flat style flat on the tool. Looks like a welded flat, but it's actually not. What it is, is if you see that flat in there, it has two ground edges that go in on an angle. And what we have is underneath this set screw, there's actually a wedge in there that is precision manufactured to fit inside this wedge of the tool. First off, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give really, really good clamping force and retention because it's in there, the tool cannot slip, and it's got a full, as opposed to a side lock holder where you got one point of contact, this actually has full points of contact down that tool. So it's really, really strong, um, really firm work holding or tool holding inside there. The next thing it does, and again, I'm gonna say it again, it lets MSC know exactly how long that tool is going to be. So if that tool is supposed to be hanging out X, they know that tool is gonna be hanging out exactly to that length. So before we kind of explain why that's important, let's look at the tool. Oh, one more thing about this. So you see these little slots in here. This is actually for through spindle coolant for the tool holder. So even if you have a tool that is not through spindle coolant, it has those channels to get you coolant exactly where you need it right in the cutting edge. Better tool life, better finish, everything you need that way. The third component here is the tool. So these are provided by AccuPro. It comes as part of the kit, but you can buy them as replacements. These are available everywhere from a three flute solid carbide all the way up to a seven flute. So whether you're doing hard stuff, whether you're doing soft stuff, gummy stuff, there is an option out there for you. And these are available all the way up to three quarter inch diameter. So you can get some really big, robust cuts and up to two inches of cutting length. So if you go on there, you can see pretty much any kind of job you're gonna be running there's something there for it. Good tools, really, really good tools. We've been running these, um, you know, they, you can get them with edge or uh, corner rads, sharp corner, whatever you need that way. So the reason why this is all important, and I keep going back to balance, weight, length, is this system is actually designed for your machine. So when I go on to the fourth component of this kit, which is the dashboard, the first thing I'm gonna do is select my machine. So what they've done is they've gone through and tested all the harmonics, all the vibrations across a whole whack of machines. More there than I can list here. You go on and pick your machine. So we were running this in the VF4SS and in the VF2. So we go on, select our assembly, select our machine. They've gone through and tested these out with their machinery and equipment to be able to know if you, the resonance of your spindle is X, they know what the resonance of all this is, it lets you go and choose your speeds and feeds to find the best speeds and feeds for that tool. 
So let's take a look at the dashboard here. So the whole benefit is since this has been tested and figured out, it takes all the guesswork out. So we go onto this dashboard and a different dashboard here is available for each machine and each assembly. What you're gonna see here is a whole bunch of bars and a whole bunch of sections for values. So the four bars at the top here on the AccuPro dashboard, those each represent a different material group. So we have steels, hardened steels, stainless steels, and titanium groups. From there, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna put in my desired depth of cut with this tool and how wide that cut is gonna be or the step over. So how deep and how wide that cut's gonna be. Once I've done that, you're gonna see these bars at the top change into ranges with green, yellow, and red areas. What these represent are the speed and feed values for this tool, going from slowest to fastest, from left to right, just like reading a book. So where I see green here, I know that cut is going to be stable. On the left here, you can see it's mostly green. This is if we were programming a tool normally, most of us would start out, you know, slower spindle feeds, slower feeds. We all kind of know this kind of cut is going to be safe. So a lot of us end up keeping our parameters, you know, when we're not using the system around here. So we know the cut's safe, we know the finish is good, but because it's a slow speed, it's a slow feed, this means our cycle time is going to be long. And we all know time is money. So, you know, we typically want to ramp up. So in a normal case, what do we do? We dial up the speed, we dial up the feed, we run it until we get chatter, and then we dial it back a bit. That's great, but all that really does is if you look at these bars, it puts us into the yellow or red sections here. And where you see yellow and red on these bars, that means you're gonna have a worse cut, you're gonna have chatter, you're gonna have vibration. But if we use this AccuPro system before we get started with the dashboard, you can see that if we actually dialed up the speed and feed even further, we have these other green areas up further in the bar. So essentially, if we go through these areas of bad chatter and stuff and kept dialing it up, eventually we would get there. Now, this takes the guesswork out of it. We're not breaking tools, we're not wasting time. We can go and right off the bat have an optimized speed and feed right off the bat. So what do we get? We get faster cuts, we get to harness the power of the machine, we get reduced cycle times, all while having better performance, higher material removal rates, and a better finish. There's really no downside to this. Um, you know, we've been using this now for a couple of weeks. We actually ran this on some production jobs and the results really have spoken for themselves. We had these parts already programmed up originally using our, you know, speeds and feed charts and just kind of how we program things. And, you know, we were getting a good finish the old way. Our cycle times weren't really optimized. With using the AccuPro system, we actually managed to shave minutes off of each cycle time while holding tolerance and getting a really nice finish in here. And what this really did for the guys on the floor is it helped illustrate to them just how much we could push the machine harder and just how much harder we could be running that tool. It's been really enlightening for the guys on the floor and myself to go through this to see, you know, hey, listen, if this cycle was 15 minutes, if we were running this tool the right way, we can get that down to 10 minutes. If we do a little more, we can get it down to eight. So it's been a really interesting process going through and seeing just how much we can shave off just by using this dashboard. So that's been really, really handy. And these dashboards, guys, you can go on right now and play around with them. You can you know, view any kind of machine, you can view any kind of tool and see just how much faster you could be running your tooling if you were using this AccuPro system. So I highly recommend you check it out. In any case, guys, have you guys given the MSC AccuPro ST system a shot? If you have, I'd like to know your comments below. Let me know what you think. We're really enjoying it so far. We're gonna be continuing to test these out. So hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.